congratulations kunal on uh, on this book on 1965 or uh, the western sunrise uh, you you are a you are a military historian of repute uh, one has been following your books right from that long road to siachen that you wrote uh, uh, on the siachen issue then you've taken up some very difficult campaigns like 62 1962 the war that that wasn't 1965 Uh, this particular book, um, of course, one has been following your North Eastern trilogy and other set of uh, coffee table books and such like books that you're doing. Coming down to this particular book, I think this is a very uh, candid and an incisive account. And if I I may be allowed to say, is rather blunt and uh, very harsh at times. And I'll talk about that. Uh, talk about that later. I say that in a very complimentary sense, though. in this my sense is and i'll allow me just a couple of sentences before i ask you the first question india had gone through this debacle of 1962 you've written about it in your earlier book um on the other hand in early 60s uh, pakistan got massive military aid from the us it was amounting to uh, over 3 billion dollars and 3 billion dollars that time was a lot of money so pakistan had uh, very advanced fighter jets they had saber jets they had patton tanks uh, whereas india was just sort of uh, struggling to get its act together after the 1962 war so on one hand it was buoyed by that military support they had on the other hand uh, i think they banked too much on the kashmiri popular support they thought there would be an uprising and then they launched this attack um what happened then is something that you it was a kind of a stalemate uh, both sides called it victory and went home um, what are your how would you like to i mean i this is as a as a military man this is how i see the war how would you like to sum up in in very few words uh, talk about your book and then i'll ask try and ask you some questions well firstly it's a pleasure to be with you sir thank you in fact uh, long road to siachen was co-authored with brigadier williams who's yes. from your your battalion yes. And I think we met at his residence the first time. Yeah. Of course, you were in Assam Rifles also before True. that. So, as far as 1965 Western Sunrise is concerned, it's actually a continuation of 1962, mm -hmm. uh, the war that wasn't. I actually say so. Mm -hmm. The gap between the two wars was very, very minuscule. Yeah. It was just three years, and the events which kind of uh, were left hanging uh, with the in the aftermath of the 62 war. Actually, led to a series of events which led to the '65 war. Yeah. '65, uh, blunt. Yes, '62, uh, '65 are both books which are very, actually, very difficult to write, especially '62. Yeah. I'll dwell on '62 a little bit earlier, and then I'll come to this. '62 for me was personally also one hell of a journey because my father was from yeah. Tur Rajput. As a two-year-old kid, I remember the whole. trauma that the family faced because every we lost 281 yes. men in a matter of hours you know and uh, this was a story which i felt really needed to be told and then i was doing the northeast trilogy and all that kind of stuff and i was in ladakh so i had the opportunity to literally walk the ground uh, you were dg uh, ar in uh, the eastern sector so you know when i was doing the assam rifles book and i used that to do the northeast trilogy but i also used the northeast trilogy to do a lot of yeah. research for the 62 book i went to the namkachu valley i went to various bunkers i went to sela i used to just sit there and i used to just sit there in the bunkers and just try and think and visualize what could have possibly happened and actually the terrain starts speaking to you sir after a while once you're there you know ki aise hi hua hoga because it can't happen this way you know the problem with uh, most of our military writing until that point sir has been that there were some very good writers there were people like general dk palet then his war in the high himalayas has some very good excerpts brigadier uh, dalvi's own book has certain elements in it which are mm -hmm. very very good my father also had written that book rivers of silence yeah. and there there were people who had dabbled with 62 sir the thing was to somehow try and get to it without and just remove the emotional part from the whole thing and then look at it as objectively as possible because otherwise there's no point doing military history if we start looking at uh, ye mera chacha hai ye mera bhatija hai ye meri regiment hai isko ye karna hai to you forget it it will not happen because it will it becomes a non starter 
So I think to that extent I managed to detach myself to some extent from the 62 book, but it was a very, very difficult book to write. And that then led on naturally to the 65, but 65 itself I found was completely misrepresented. Mm -hmm. There was a, all the writings on 65 have been, uh, mostly so they've been centered around General Harbaksh's own writing, his war dispatches sure. for example has also very heavily influenced the Ministry of Defence uh, uh, official version of 65, which has only now been declassified, etc. And everybody was feeding off each other. You know, if somebody said something, they would take that as the gospel truth and usko leke phir recycle karke. And this guy is quoting this chap, this chap is quoting this guy, this guy is, it was going back and forth. But there were a lot of discrepancies there, so which were mm -hmm. not making any sense. And then Maharaja Amrinder and uh, uh, Mao Shergill wrote the, another very, very good book, I mean, The Monsoon War. But again, they kind of reinforced a lot that had been said at that time. It also became very Ahmad Kaur centric, the entire reportage of the 1965 war. The Pakistanis were on a different plane altogether. The, the major influx of weapons started in the 50s itself when, I, when Eisenhower visited. So, uh, Pakistan and Pakistan became a member of NATO and C uh, Centro. Centro. Everybody talks about the fighter jets, the F-104, the Starfighter, the F-86, yeah. the Sabre jet. They talk about the patterns, they talk about even the French submarines, the Daphne. Mm. But that was not the issue, sir. What was the real qualitative and quantitative difference was the artillery support that they had. Okay. It was absolutely phenomenal. It was phenomenal. I mean, they were saturating that Western frontier with the kind of artillery support they had. But in that changeover from the British doctrine to the American doctrines of fighting, etc., they became very armored core centric. Yes. Their entire infantry concept, except for the mountains, which was the 12 division area, had gone out of the window. Mm. And this is what they were actually wanting to initially test out when they came into the run of Kutch, etc. Now, Again, there's another myth that the Navy was not involved in 1965. But in my view, the war actually started because of a naval exercise that we conducted off, off the Katiawar coast. Mm. Yeah, true. It started in Kutch. <coughs> that was later, sir. Ran no, 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 sorry, you're talking So, about what that. happened was, the, we had sent Vikrant there, sir. And there were Sea Hawks and Alizas buzzing all over the place. And from a Pakistani perspective, India had lost the 62 war. We are hanging around in the Gulf of Katyar and in that, you know, that whole area. And look at it from Bhutto's perspective, who was a foreign minister. His father had been the Prime Minister of Junagadh. Mm. And it was an amphibious landing, as you know, in 1948, which actually swung the whole thing around. So he, so when he's looking at it, looking at it from a Karachi perspective, also 50 independent para brigade was the one which was being activated. They were seriously thinking that the Indians are going to do some sort of an amphibious assault on Karachis. Right. And I think that what actually happened in the run of Kutch is actually a spoiling action in a manner of speaking. Because the moment the Vikrant pulled out of the area, they decided, okay, okay this is a good place to try and see what happens. And there the ground was entirely in their favor. Because you see, the Sindh is hard ground. And then there's a huge swamp. And the whole debate about the run of Kutch has been that the maritime law should apply and it should be halfway this there. So we were and completely... That, and that, sorry for interrupting you. And that is the time when we launched in Kargil, right? Subsequently, sir. Abhi after, nahi, abhi nahi. After this Kach. was in April, May, sir. This is, uh, Kargil happened after that. Hmm. So, when the hmm. operation started, in uh, the Pakistanis actually hmm. first tested out this concept of APCs hmm. and hmm. they brought in the patterns, which was a mistake on their part. Because when we launched those vampires and we filmed it and we produced this as evidence to the world, etc., they were on the back foot because the agreement with the Americans was that this hardware cannot be used against India. Okay. It was supposed to be got against who the hell they wanted it, but you know they, this was not supposed. That's this was one of the clauses. That's interesting. And uh, then, of course, Harold Wilson and the British got involved. The British, of course, have always had a finger in every pie. Now, another thing which the 65 war also brings out is the fact that Mount Batten, mm -hmm. after the 62 war, was continuously hanging around Delhi, sir. Mm -hmm. He came thrice. A man would be in the Viceroy. Well, now the C at that time he was officially the CDS of the British Army. And he used to come and, you know, he was, and he instigated Nehru into releasing Sheikh Abdullah and the whole Kashmir thing restarted. In fact, 
Nehru had more or less decided that the valley will be divided and the whole battle will be shot because Mountbatten, for Mountbatten, the biggest failure, which is what I've dealt in the long road yeah. to Siachen, was the fact that when he went back to England, Churchill never spoke to him again. He says, you've completely ruined all our British interests because Kashmir was Kashmir. an integral part of that. So he had a role to play. So he came, he played on Nehru's mind, Sheikh Abdullah was let loose, then Nehru died. And Sheikh Abdullah was actually that time with Ayub Khan, when Nehru has passed away. And then Shastri came. You know. Shastri was a different cup of tea, yeah. completely different cup of tea. And, and, and that's where we really started developing some sort of a spine. And what happened in the run of Kutch was also a stalemate. I mean, there was the Pakistanis True. launched a full-fledged attack. Three para and four para fought pretty well. They held them off. Yeah. It, more than that, even those 25 CRPF boys at the uh, Sardar post put up a fantastic performance. At least we were not running. You know? I mean, the Pakistanis had thought, "Yeh to busdil hai, yeh to wo chid ke saath yeh wata hamar sabhi hoga." Exactly. All we need to do is show up, and they'll run away. It didn't happen. Now that is where, after the ceasefire. We went in for this thing of, of a blaze where we started planning all kinds of things and that's when, when, that's when Kargil happened, sir. Because that is when four Rajput and uh, the guards unit etc. were involved. And again, those were operations which happened on a limb, sir. Because Brigadier Ghai was Brigadier, was the commander of 121 Brigade. That was like more like opening a, a second front or starting something. It wasn't something. authorized, sir. I that's the point. But the because fact remains that they, they did sort of draw the attention away. That was the attempt. The thing was, we kicked them out of those yes. posts and we started yeah, dominating absolutely. the road. Now, that happened. Uske baad they have launched Operation Gibraltar. Yeah. Much, much later, as far back as September. But there again lies a hell of a story. Because where did all this happen? How did it happen? The GOC-12 division yeah. was, a, was, a, was, like a, was like a loose cannon. So, but like when you, when you look at the Kargil War, yes. 1999. One of the things, uh, there may have been constraining factors, but one of the things that did not happen was we did not open up another front. We could have done something, but there were other reasons. I'm not denying that. Unlike that, here in 1965, one sees that we started something in Kargil, like unauthorized, as you said, but, but that was the uh, result of it. They, it happened. Thereafter, when uh, mm. Pakistan launched and made gains towards Cham, we launched towards Lahore Sialkot. It all became a kind of yeah, it became a reactive, reactive. counter -react. So, all I am trying to say, at least we were opening a different front. We, we even captured Haji Pir. That it was given away later was a separate matter. So, all, all I am trying to point out to the operational or the tactical necessity of opening uh, but other fronts. But we did it in Kargil. Now, that's the beauty yeah, of the whole we, thing. In 1999, we had a second front. Very few people talk about it. Actually, the Navy went and blockaded yeah. Karachi Harbour. Yeah. Now, that's a huge thing. Yeah. I remember talking to the Admiral uh, Shushil Isaacs at that time and he said, listen, Army, we are one as to one virtually because of the deployment on the yeah. ground. Air Force may be 1.5 to 1.25 or 1 to 1 is to again 1 and a half to 1. He said, Navy, we got an 8 to 1 superiority. Mm. And Vajpayee had actually uh, the, the, the said, go ahead and uh, blockade the harbour. We had submarines sitting there. We had made it very obvious to anybody, anybody coming into this area, we'll see. And that made a hell of a difference because the day we started blockading Karachi, Karachi mm -hmm. Nawaz Sharif was running to the United States and throwing himself at the feet of Bill Clinton. Sir. Yeah. It is, that is what has actually. So the second front was open, so it's just right. that we don't talk too Good. much about I'm it. I'm glad you spoke about it. And now, since I mentioned Haji Peer, there is a common perception amongst uh, this Indian citizens at large. Haji Peer had. Uh, was gained in 65, we captured it, but in Tashkent Agreement, uh, Shastri gave it away. Now, there are reasons and somehow that don't stand out, we don't talk about that. Would you like to throw some light and uh, throw light on that? Sir, I think it's a very, very deep question and now the certain papers have now been declassified as especially you know. Especially about Chum. Especially about Tashkent, sir. Okay. Right? And. Uh, so what is emerging now is that the Americans had their finger in every pie. Sir. Mm -hmm. Even 62, a lot of the fighting has happened because of what the CIA was doing in Sikkim, sir. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they got the Dalai Lama out in 59 years. And we've always landed up holding the cat. Now, I am quite convinced in my head, though I haven't said it in the 65 book, that the Americans had a major role to play in Tashkent also, sir. Mm -hmm. Shastri was fully aware of the implications of what Haji Peer meant. Now, Haji Peer we talk about again 
as just a particular post which was there and it, the link between Uri and Srinagar. But actually, Haji Pir is much more than that. It's a bulge. It's a bulge. And that bulge is where the entire infiltration takes place. And when we talk of Haji Pir, sir, we also have to talk of the Kishan Ganga bulge, which is the Gurej sector. True. We had taken both, sir. Haji Pir we had captured, so had we captured the Kishan Ganga. And we cleared yes. these guys out. Yes. They were actually finished because the entire raiders were inside. They had no way of going back. There was no way of coming in. So the the tactical importance of Hajipir and this thing, Kishan Ganga Bal, was fully known to Shastri. I, I met the uh, PS to, the, to uh, uh, Mr. Chavan, who was in the room next to the Prime Minister when he died that night. And he has told me, he says, you know, there was nothing ambiguous about it. In fact, the Prime Minister was saying, I cannot go back to India, I cannot sign this. But he was made to sign it. And now what actually happened there? And I have a feeling, if you really look at the entire Kashmir thing, so you've served there, everybody served there, you've just come back from the Karakoram Pass, for example. It's the American maps, where even from NJ 9842, so the line which has been drawn to the KK Pass, mm -hmm. is, is US Air Force maps. They're not Pakistani Air Force maps. They're US Air Force maps. Yeah. So the US have always had that finger in it. And then again in 2005, they tried to get us to vacate from Siachen and hand it over to Pakistan, etc. Why do they do this every time? And I think even Tashkent, sir, the, there was a lot of CIA pressure mm -hmm. in, at play, which I think will now gradually start coming out with this declassification of papers. Because sir, General Chaudhary also, that one piece of advice is given to the Prime Minister that we don't have ammunition when we had only expended 13%. We had 87%. You can't go wrong on a thing like that. Mm -hmm. What was controlling him? Who was controlling him? Is the Americans again in the Who, immediate aftermath of 62? I mean, I don't know. Let me just put this question to you a little bluntly. Are you reading too much into it? Yeah, for I, instance, no, I don't think so, sir. No, listen. For instance, the fact that uh, the Prime Minister sought advice from the Army Chief and the Army Chief said uh, that we are not ready to prolong the war because our, uh, we don't have ammunition and that, that it was proven wrong. That information was proven wrong. You bring that out in your book as well. But the fact also is that our army chiefs or the higher military leadership that time was actually not very, not so experienced, shall we say. Also, our political leadership uh, was also living under the hangover of 1962. The, the political leadership also did not involve the military leadership in the, in the strategic planning. Uh, during 1965 war. They were not very well, in, they were not uh, integrated in them. Let me, let me, I've got pretty strong views on this. That's why I know that. Uh, Sir, General Chaudhary was de facto CDS, all right. He was 10 years senior to Arjun Singh. Mm -hmm. He was 10 years senior to Soman. Now, in a service where somebody is one number junior to you, or you are doing sir to him for the rest of your life, rank-wise also, sir. They were, yes, they, they, were, were three, they were three star, he was yeah. a four star. Sir. Now, they were 10 years junior to him, sir, 10 years. But yet he did not employ uh, No, no, wait a minute. Well. So, the person who is taking all the call mm -hmm. and the decision, it's not Arjun Singh and it's not Admiral Sonam, it's, it's, it's Chaudhary. Yeah. Now, I'll tell you something very, very interesting, sir. The day Operation Gibraltar was launched, when mm -hmm. the raiders have come in, and we were really in trouble and we need, uh, sorry, the, uh, uh, the Grand Slam was launched in Cham. Mm -hmm. And the assault had started and there was only seven cavalry, uh, not seven, uh, 20 cavalry standing there with right. Major Bhaskar Roy and the AMX 13s and a couple of battalions hanging in there. What happened, sir? Chaudhary was in, was in Badami Bag, sir, that night. Mm -hmm. He's taken off from Srinagar at 10 o'clock, sir. He's landed at Delhi at 4. This is very well documented, sir. Mm -hmm. A Dakota takes three and a half hours to fly in those days from Srinagar to Lace, or to, from Srinagar to Delhi, sir. 10 o'clock, he takes off. 12.30, he should have been in Delhi. Where was he during that period, sir? Uh, that, nobody has gone into that again. He went to Pathan Court, sir. He is the one who decided that vampires will attack. He is the one who decided this essay karna hai, ye karna hai. Arjun Singh was too much of a gentleman later on to say that the army chief did this. He is landed at 4 o'clock at 4, at 2 minutes past 4, they given the order for launching the aircraft. Who did all this work? He did it, sir. He had completely taken charge. He did not allow anybody else to get a... He, the problem was not just with the Navy and the Air Force. Chaudhary did not consult his own staff as well. Palat and everybody bring that out very, very well. 
And when it came to it, when the Prime Minister has asked him for a very critical piece of advice, he's given him something which is absolutely wonky. How can you be so off target? So, does that, uh, I mean, does that speak of, uh, you, on one hand, you say that he spoke for everybody. Yeah. On the other, I don't know whether, whether he was considering everybody's advice at all. So, he had very fixed views about it because that period you talk about. Then, when, in that case, what intrigues me then is that why was Air Force not fully utilized? Why was it not used? No, not used. If that okay. was the, you see, when, when Pathan Court happened, I'm talking about the Pathan Court, uh, terrorist attack at Pathan Court happened, there were issues between Air Force and the Army uh, in terms of tackling the terrorists over there. And we, we blame it on not being integrated enough, not having a theater, joint theater command or integrated theater command. But that time, if he was the CDS. Uh, no, he wasn't officially the yeah, CDS. I, I, I de facto like, like, yeah, Yes, I'm so yeah. sorry. Uh, you oh. meant he was almost like the CDS. He was. He had both the forces under their wing, under his wings. If that was the case, then they should have employed Air Force better. Complete so, mind, mindset was a complete blackout as far as the Air Force was concerned. Alright, let me just take a larger question. In 1962, I'm an army on general, but I, I agree that in 1962, we did not use, the, use the Air Force. Tactically, at least we did not. Operationally, tactically, we did not. Uh, in 1965, we did not make good use of the Air Force. There good was, use? It was pathetic. We yeah. tried some air photographs, air rec all, all that also, uh, in your books, you bring out that it reached late and it was of no use, etc. So, today also, when now we are at the cusp of uh, integrating our structures and creating integrated theatre command, the CDS has been appointed, all that reforms are taking place. Today again, we see now Air Force amongst the three services, is posting differences on the process of integration. So do you, uh, I know it's beyond the book, but uh, do you have anything you to say? Of fire or rocket here, yeah. <laughs> uh, so the Air Force is a, I love the Air Force. I've had a lot to do with them, just as I've grown up in the Army. I've got... I have grown up in the Air Force. My father was in the so Air Force. I've flown <laughs> every fighter type with the Air Force. Mm -hmm. I've had a ball. Now, having said that, I've yeah. also filmed the Kargil Wars, and uh, I have seen the differences on the ground Mm -hmm. in a manner which all of you have experienced it. We had, there were times we were really asking why the Air Force not coming in and yes. you know, there were, I can give you numerous examples but I don't want to get into that. The fact is, I completely endorse your point that there is a complete disconnect between the Army and the Air Force at various levels and for that, partly it's also the ethos of the two services which is true. Yeah, Both okay. are to blame but, hmm. but this is going to the detriment of no, the nation. And, and, yeah, it is, it is. And in fact, today, if we don't sort this out, yes. even now, we'll be in real deep trouble. True. And I think the Air Force, on its part, also needs to sort of uh, take a few steps and uh, start looking at the larger picture because they do tend to have a very service-centric view. 62, why the Air Force was not used? is a question which, you know, a lot, a lot of people, again, the myths which were there around the war, Everybody said it's Nehru's decision not to use the Air Force. It was not true, sir. It was later Air Marshal uh, Diwan, who was the CNC in 71 in the Eastern Command. He was ACS Ops. At that time, he was an Air Commodore. Mm -hmm. I was interviewing him for that film, Salt of the Earth. On the, and we were talking to him about Burma and this, that. And 62 hadn't come up because he wasn't, I never correlated connected, him connected, to him. Yes. So when I started to pack my Nagras and the you know sound systems and all that, and he says, Kunal, better to say, I have something else to show you and talk to you about. I said, what happened? He says, 62, everybody talks about BM call. I had a major role to play in it. I said, what are you talking about? Hmm. And he says, I am the one who convinced Panditji not to use the Air Force. And it was actually he and BM uh, Malik, the intelligence and guy, what, who... What is what the reason that he advances? He gave very good reasons for it. He said, in fact, he called his wife, he said, get my logbook. And he said he was with 7 Squadron or 5 Squadron or whatever, I think 7 Squadron. He was flying the, uh, the reconnaissance hurricanes. Mm -hmm. He says he did 471 sorties. I still remember that number. Okay. He says I was going crisscross, crisscross, crisscross. I never saw the Japanese. Never saw the Japanese? No, it was also different terrain, sir. It was a, it was a Naga Pat guy. Mm -hmm. You were looking yeah. in a very difficult area. But unlike the passes of the, on the other side in the Himalayas, it's passes. You ha they had no option but to come through. Kenzamane yeah. and they had no option but to come down certain, so all, we had to just the, strike at the very base of that and the Air Force would have played a major role. Where Malik failed was that the Chinese were not capable of flying, so they didn't have aviation fuel. 
you refer to Jagannath Sotis, he was flying up and down, up and down, up and down on the northern side of the Karakoram. He used to cross over at KK Pass. Every photograph, every vehicle number, every track, sab kuch tha. Mm-hmm. Later, Talat Singh said, Air Force didn't give us the photograph. He has written a citation for a Mahavir Chakra. What is he talking about, sir? We need yeah. to start telling the truth. The fact is, we had all the information we wanted. We just did not use it. And it was a complete failure of command, sir. And the Air Force, had it been used, would have been a completely different story. True. I mean, uh, I don't deny that. We made mistakes. Uh, we need to learn from our mistakes. And for that, what is required is honest honest chronicling. Yes. Uh, only then can the lessons be learned. If we try and paper over things, it won't work. So let me ask you a last question. Uh, you have been, uh, in my view, rather harsh on the generals. You have said, uh, and I, I, I recall the sentence you said that, had uh, General Chaudhary or General Arbaksh been serving under Hitler or Stalin. I included Arjun Singh also in that. Oh, you did? Yes. Okay. So, they... They would have been taken have behind been, the barn and shot. Uh, shot. Just, yes, yeah, that's what I said. So, the point I wish to make, I think when we attained independence, our armies were combat seasoned. We had Leadership. participated Leadership. in world wars. Yes. Leadership was, the highest was a one star rank. True. So, and then on, we did not get a nurturing environment in our country. I mean, the political leadership also sort of kept us at bay. They treated us with a bit of suspicion of what is was happening in the neighboring country and, and, and their colonial hangovers. So, the fact also remains that we did not get that kind of uh, mentoring or nurturing environment thereafter. So, our leadership uh, does leave uh, some question marks. But... Um, uh, I think overall we did, at the tactical level, we did redeem ourselves. There were some very good battles. Even in 62, there were very good battles uh, individually. It was Razangla or many such battles that we can talk of. Also, so was the case in 1965, which was at best a stalemate at least. It wasn't a stalemate, sir. I don't we, agree with that. Uh, well, in fact, I've said so. I yeah. think it was, a, it was definitely an Indian victory, sir. No, We've quartered them at every all their objectives. Absolutely. So, I, I, I was trying to be... Um, Level Bal- on that, balanced, balanced on that to say that at least it's a it's a stalemate. In fact, the right word that someone phrase someone has used, I doubt I read it in your book. It says stalemated victory. India had a stalemated victory. So, but that's jargon. My point is uh, to blame only military leadership for that is not correct. Political leadership also had to have a part of his blame. So, with due respect, the leadership of Prime Minister Shastri oh, yes, that was right. outstanding. So that is your political leadership as and even Chavan was very good, sir. But they did not uh, they did not take the military leaders along. As far as uh, the uh, the conduct of operations is concerned, stung by 62, I get a feeling they left. Uh, but aren't they supposed to, sir? You don't want the political leadership getting into your tactical decisions. No, no, no not, not in tactical decisions. Integrating them, them while taking their decisions. So I think... You're being a little... In 65, I don't agree. I think the political leadership was outstanding. Mm-hmm. They had... I'm talking purely of Shastri and Chavak. They had I, given I, them I, carte I blanche. I don't disagree with that. They had given them carte blanche. They said, Karo jo karna hai. Mm. The failure was there. We have to say it was a failure. If we don't want to say it, sir, we're going to be... You know, we are all... That's the problem. I mean, I, I know. I don't like saying these things that they should be taken behind the barn and shop. But actually, it's a fact. The fact is that eventually it doesn't matter who you are. If you if you fail your lead, your men and your country, I I made the IMA film where Manik Shaw makes that fantastic speech that he says there is only there's no place for the yeah. loser. Yeah. And he, you know that speech he makes yeah. in that IMA film and he says, Agar se, if you don't come back victorious, don't come back. Tumari gharwali bhi tumara so, sir, what are we talking about I am very politely saying that they are not going to kill them. But that, that is my view, sir. But I, I think it needs to be said, sir. I didn't say it lightly. Let me just say it that way, sir. Let me just put it that way. Alright. I, I agree with you that uh, to the extent that we should um, have a very honest uh, analysis of our wars if we want to win the next one. That Definitely, so otherwise, you don't, otherwise we paper over. If you our, don't our keep faults. looking at what you actually, where you've gone wrong, how, how do you expect to find any kind of, how do you cost correct, how do you do these so, things? Thank you, Kunal. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, for, Always uh, a pleasure being with you. Uh, same here. Thank you for 
all the books that you're writing, all the service that you do to military history. Uh, so and it's other. been a pleasure. Thank you.